All right, up ahead is the island of Zakynthos, and we are getting very close. We got about two hours to go. It was uh, about a 64 mile distance from our anchors in Pilos. We left early this morning at first light, and we are officially passed into the northern Ionian. And this is really kind of the terminus of the challenging kind of march upwind up north. Um, from all the way from Crete. A lot of tanker traffic coming through here, showing up on AIS. So that's kept us busy. Hi, I'm Karen, and my husband is Tom. Welcome to Life 4.0, where we share our experiences of living aboard Sea Rose, our 44-foot sailboat, while we travel together to new and exciting destinations. What's with the name 4.0, you ask? Well, we both enjoyed careers in the software industry, so thinking about life in iterations or phases, well, versions if you will, came natural to us. We are anchored in Castos. Life 4.0 finds us taking an early retirement so we can travel and explore while we have the health and energy to do this in the way that we want. We spend about half of each year on our sailboat and the rest enjoying land-based living and exploration with a home base in the northeast of the United States. We hope you enjoy our Life 4.0 as you think about shaping your own. There is only one go at this thing called life. Make the most of it. Last mile or two before we get into the anchorage up here, we got a lot of small boats, probably a lot of rentals um, we got to watch out for. And uh, so we're going right in up here. But we've been told that there's a lot of rocks, both above the water and below the water, so we're gonna be really cautious of that. This place doesn't have a name on the chart, and on Navali, the person who put the entry in just called it Scenic View for the name of the harbor, so pretty cool. A cove with the name Scenic View seemed like the reasonable place to start our Zakintos adventure, and we hopped in the water to check out a tall pinnacle nearby. To our surprise, it led to a tunnel and more scenic views on the other side. After the refreshing cool down in the water, we jumped into the dinghy to examine a few of the nearby caves. Karen gets to be captain of our big boat most of the time, leaving me as the main skipper of the dinghy, and this time it gave me a chance to push her to the edge of her cave comfort zone. Here's a little overhang. Oh wow, yeah, this one goes in and around the corner a little bit. I can see some squishy splashes. Oh wow, it may go. Yeah, it does. It goes down and back in there. Oh, it's ripped. It takes just about all of my nerves to like sit here and wait for us to slowly back out. Oh. You look and you can see a fair bit of cracks and rocks falling down. I mean, this has to be deteriorating all the time. It's so beautiful. You can see this layer up here. Oh, there's a hole up in there, too. Crevasse. Yes, a vertical crevasse. Are you gonna go over to this thingy? Yeah. Cool. Oh, it looks like we might have another cave to the right, too. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. Dagger hanging above. Okay. Wow. No, it's too dark. Oh my gosh. I don't know if I can tolerate this. This is scary. Wow. Wow, that's just nuts. And it goes way back in there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess 
it would be a quick death. Here's this purple that I love on the uh, sides of the caves. Oh my god. You just have to go up just a teeny bit so you can see. Just go this way. Oh my god. It is so deep back in there. I can't, okay, I can't go. I can't go. It goes way back. This is so beautiful. I love this, but I hate it. Sort of. I know. It's a love-hate. This one's really tall. Yeah. They're all a little different. You can see the really clear bottom down through there. More of that lovely purple. Okay, this is just about as long as Karen can stand it in a cave. <laughs> favorite way to end a day is to go up on the bow after the sun has set by a couple hours, turn off all the lights on the boat, lay down on the bow and look up into the sky and see the million stars. Um, it makes you, it gives you a really great perspective of where you are in the universe, that you're just a, a small, tiny little speck, but, um, but yet, you know, you feel your own life is so incredibly important and therefore everyone else feels the same way. So why can't we all have a very important life? Um, it's a time of day when I, I do a lot of contemplation. I, I think back about the day. I think about what I want to try to achieve the next day or how I want to live a little differently. Um, and to me, it's just such a natural time. You can often see, especially when you're on a really dark night like tonight, you can see the Milky Way very, very significantly. Uh, you can see so many stars. Um, the sun, uh, sorry, the moon set recently. There was just a sliver of a moon that was up when the sun set. And it got brighter and brighter and brighter as the sun was gone and the sky got darker. And then the moon just recently set over by, by our stern and it, um, and then there was just no light out at all. Uh, and it's just such an amazing time of day to listen to nature that's happening around you, whether it's a splashing of, um, the water on the cliffs around, some of the bird, the final bird calls, um, just the day shutting down. And you can think back and say, okay, you know, what did I do today? What do I hope to do tomorrow? And um, I don't know, it's, I just find it to be a very rejuvenating time of day, a very, a very special time of day for me. So we're taking off, we're gonna go further up the western coast of Zakynthos, and um, by all counts there's plenty more spots like this with uh, cool pinnacles and steep cliffs and cliffs and cliffs and caves and caves and caves. So uh, we have more to more of the same to look forward to which is really exciting. It's a very kind of white, um, as you can see, very kind of white rock and sort of chalky uh, look to it and in fact when we were snorkeling yesterday the water um, in some cl spots close to the shore was very murky it kind of had this sort of white cloudy look to it like it might have been from the dust and sand of this white rock and you have other places too like this one it looks like it you know that this whole section of that hillside slid down and exposed bright white rock underneath 
so and forming a little beach at the bottom of that one, which is pretty nice. The uh, the striping on these rocks is really great too. You can see kind of a narrow striping at the bottom. So maybe sedimentary layers. I'm not sure what that would be, and then wider, sort of more uneven striping on the upper part of that island. And then on this cliff here, just very distinct bright white layers going all the way across with slightly off-white tan color layers in between. The world is an amazing place. So much that I'd like to try to understand. Hey, this is Tom. Just a reminder that if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. And when you do, be sure to click on the bell to be notified when we release new videos. And if you like what you see, be sure to give us a thumbs up. It helps others like you find this kind of content. Okay, now back to the show. We are going up into this little spot up here, see if we can find a place to anchor. There are a few rocks on the chart, so I'm up here on the bow. Uh, but the chart hasn't really doesn't have any readings. This is all one blue color. So we'll use our own wits to get in here. All right, we are settled into this uh, <clears throat> new little cove here. We were gonna bail on it because there are rocks just below the surface over here and closer into those caves. Um, and otherwise it was super deep so we just tried we put out an anchor out in about 17 meters of water and knowing that we're only going to be here for a short day stop for a swim we can keep an eye on the boat with another cove all to ourselves we put our suits on and went in search of more caves it's almost like a, a gold color And finally, my own cave fears came alive as I got spooked by a sudden blast of compressed air in my face. Yeah, you gotta check this out. In the next cave, I wisened up and brought our underwater light, giving me the chance to explore deep inside to the very end. To see more around the corner, we launched the dinghy. Oh, you rat. You're going to try this, aren't you? Okay. Right. It is plenty deep. Oh my gosh. My husband scares me so much. <laughs> Pretty cool, we just drove through a cave. We went through there. So you can see a whole bunch of sulfur color right along the water. And it's really strong sulfur smell right here. The other thing we noticed through here is that the water is incredibly cold on the very surface. So we think it must be coming out of this, um, this area in here. We don't know what the name of this is either, do we? So, 
I was thinking about this one around. We can give it our own name, and Natalie. That's true. Instead of something stupid like Scenic View, we can call it like, you know, Agios Tomas. Or <laughs> right, right, right. Something that could be possible. I would have it be something sulfur. Uh, maybe we come uh, up with a Greek word for sulfur. Yeah, that's true. And so it was, we named this cove Ormos Theo, the Greek word for sulfur. If you visit the area, please promote the name. Man, this is just yet another incredible place. So there is a little cove right up in here. And you can see that whole crazy cliffside surrounding what could be quite a protected cove. We're gonna try to get, see if we can get over there and have some lunch. All right, so we decided to anchor in this little cove. It's pretty cool. We are um, surrounded by cliffs. And going around the rest of this way. Thank you for lunch, dear. Once again, we had found an unnamed anchorage, which left us with a new puzzle to solve. We decided on a shout out to our son Zachary, naming this cove Ormos Zacharia. Again, your enthusiastic support would be appreciated. All right, we find ourselves in the unusual situation of heading south, actually a little southeast, going back down the coast of Zakynthos after uh, Nice lunch, extra long lunch stop in a cove inside there. And we've got 15, 16 knots of wind humming along here at a good seven, seven and a half knots of boat speed. So lots of fun. Haven't had a lot of sailings <laughs> since we left Crete. And uh, it feels good. We're gonna do this for probably a couple hours and then round the bottom of Zakynthos and go into uh, Cary, or somewhere nearby there, to anchor for the night. How would you rate the lunch stop there, Oh, it was Captain? fantastic. Yeah. yeah, it was beautiful. It was just, we were almost in an entirely enclosed um, cliff surrounding. Yeah, it was beautiful. Even though there's no tomatoes for lunch? There's no tomatoes for lunch. That was, that was difficult, but we'll, we'll tolerate. We'll tolerate. We're in need of a produce run. No tomatoes for lunch, ran out of uh, wraps, no fruit, except for figs, which Karen loves and I don't. Figs and a couple of apples so. and that's it. Oh yeah, we have a couple of apples, so. so we need a little provisioning, but we're still making out okay. We continued around the south of the island and up the eastern shore, but nothing could compare to our experience along the west coast of Zakynthos. So, yeah, we had uh, just an overnight in Sakintos town. Um, I would say it's a little bit underwhelming. Um, we were there on a holiday day. We didn't know it was a holiday, so a lot of stores were closed until the evening. And um, so we didn't get, quite get a full impression that way. But um, it was a little run down and kind of a little tired. And like it, it suffered an earthquake in 1953, 67 years ago, but it's quite the pulse of the city hasn't quite come back, it seems like. Um, but we met a nice person there, another cruiser, a guy named Theo, who was on a boat uh, anchored near, nearby us that had a US flag. So we 
looked at a stern and it said Long Beach, California. I said, okay, that's probably pretty authentic United States uh, boat, not a not an impersonator here. That's somebody from Turkey or something like that. Uh, we had a nice time with him. We uh, actually went ashore and had some drinks, and then we came back and had dinner starting at midnight and went to bed at 2.30, so kind of a late night for us, but it was nice to meet somebody, uh, another cruiser, and we had a good chat with him. Join us next time as we continue our march north with our new sailing buddy, Theo, to the diverse island of Kefalonia on an adventure above and below the sea. Until then, be sure to leave us a comment as we appreciate hearing from our subscribers. Fair winds!